Good morning, folks. As you watch coronal plasma rain in active umbral magnetic fields, we've had CME impacted Earth, geomagnetic storm. There's another one on the way, and we've got tier one level science news starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun, with the primary event being the one featured in last night's video, the X-class solar flare and CME. But back at Earth, we've got to first discuss the CME impact we've already had. The ones from the M-class flares three days earlier impacted overnight and triggered low-level geomagnetic storms. The impact brought density and speed enhancements in the solar wind, but were about half magnetically oriented in a less geo-effective manner. These geomagnetic disruptions will have died down by the time the next CME arrives. The X-class event that happened yesterday did produce an Earth-directed CME, but it looked no bigger than the CMEs off the M-flares from earlier in the week. Satellites show a moderately spread burst with relatively low plasma density. That one is expected to arrive at Earth tomorrow night or Saturday morning on NASA's Enlil Spiral. NOAA is still not updated, but it will be today and we'll show you that one tomorrow morning. Tiny check here for those of you commenting, but wait, Ben, you say don't be scared, but our magnetic field is weakening. Doesn't that make us more vulnerable? Really? I had no idea. Where did you hear such critical information? Folks, when our field is strong and X-30 is kill shot level, we're down 20 to 25% in planetary protection, so my being generous to the sun is X-20 would be the kill shot territory, probably closer to X-25. Yes, our field is struggling, but not to end of the world levels yet. Never seen so many people anxious to get to doomsday. Anyway, Two big quakes happened yesterday, 6.9 and 7.0 in New Caledonia, the northern reach of Oceania. Luckily offshore, no tsunami. The world was far less generous with the event unfolding over the southern United States last night. Damage reports are incomplete but starting to come in across the entire area hit by that lightning line. We'll race to the shore today and head out to sea by tonight. The big science story in the mainstream news is not the big science story here, but it's not bad. They say they've never been able to pick out a lensed object this far away, the furthest star ever seen with Hubble. But all the satellites working together to look back at Earth are unquestionably doing a more important job right now. There's an incredibly complex and psychotically fine detailed tracking of geodesy, the shape and motion and rotation and geocenter of the planet. Based on tracking of various surface level stations combined with satellite observation, they are able to pinpoint where the exact center of the Earth mass is supposed to be found inside. And boy oh boy it is unstable. This level of detail is important for several high technology purposes, but also because Earth's rotation speed is speeding up. And for observers, we've got monitoring the delicate rotational and tilt character of the planet in a paramount position. Quick note up next here, after decades of knowing about the faster ice loss in polar summer than the regained ice growth in polar winter, and have spent decades failing to make atmospheric and ocean circulation models reproduce or explain it, someone was like, hey, you think it could be the sun? And well, observers, you know the rest of that story. Lastly here and our top story, a fantastic paper that screams a galactic current sheet explanation for the observations. The interstellar or galactic magnetic fields touching the heliosphere, the sun's magnetic field, are indeed part of the larger, extended, organized system. That would be the galactic magnetic system of Jet, Taurus, and the current sheet that goes through the midplane. The magnetic filament they are describing is exactly like the magnetic connections between the Earth and Sun in the interplanetary fields. Surely, the stars touch the galactic versions. And just to be sure we didn't miss that last point, they made sure to expressly state that these filaments are running inside a magnetized dusty plasma, basically using our choice words from the last three years. And while you might think that's just a coincidence, seven of the 18 authors on that paper are our friends, suspicious observers, and yeah, they know exactly what they're doing. Folks, if you didn't catch the latest Big Burb episode last night, it's a good one with rebuilding the burb, new springs, and some humor. We greatly appreciate your support. Galactic current sheet triggering the sun and earth disaster. Watch our documentary in the description box. Get our books on it at otf.cells.com. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear.
Be safe, everyone.